So today we're going to talk about scanning film and this is something that's really nice to do at home just because it gives you complete control over your images from start to finish but it's also a process that can get really sloppy and out of hand quickly uh, if you aren't careful and I know that speaking from experience because sloppiness is probably the word that would have defined uh, my workflow up until earlier this year when I really kind of sat down and structured something out from start to finish. So today what I want to do is I want to share that process uh, starting with storage to organization to labeling uh, to scanning and eventually editing. Today with my process like I said, I'm gonna share it. I'm not saying that it's the perfect process. It might not even be the right one for you, but I hope at the very least uh, it gives you a little bit of value. Maybe you get some ideas uh, that you can take away from this. And uh, just to keep things easy, obviously I'm not gonna scan a ton of film today because that would take way too much time, but I am going to uh, take some of this and kind of treat it like it was a brand new project from start to finish uh, and just cut it, sleeve it, label it, organize it, and then go through kind of my process on the computer where I put it, matching, labeling, all that kind of stuff, just to give you kind of a, a snapshot of things, uh, how I start it and how I end them. So first up, and one of the most important steps is negative storage. So when it comes to storing negatives, I go the binder route using print file sheets which I'm sure you're all super familiar with. Uh, and there's two versions of the print file sheets that I use, but there's three that I'm gonna mention. Um, and I put links in the description below if you're interested in checking these out. So the first one is the 35-7BXW, and this is for 35 millimeter. So these are the ones that can hold seven strips of six frames, so you can fit an entire roll of 36, obviously with some room left. Uh, but you gotta be careful because there is another version called the 35-7B, uh, which can only hold 35 frames. So if you're shooting roll of 36, obviously it's a little bit annoying because you gotta trim one frame off of the end of one of the strips. For medium format, I started off using the 120-4B. So these ones can hold 12 frames of 6x6 uh, and 6x4.5, uh, but they can only do eight frames of 6x7, which is what I shoot most of. So I switched to the 120-4UB, uh, and these can hold 10 frames of 6.7, uh, so that's perfect for me. They can also hold 16 frames of 6x4.5. So this has me covered for both of the formats that I shoot the most of. When it comes to storage, I put them all in a best file archival binder. So these are really nice. I think I got them from BH Photo. Um, and what's great about them is they're nice and wide so they can fit those oversized negative sheets. Uh, and then they also have these snap locks on the side, which is great because they seal up really good just to keep dirt, dust out, stuff like that. And then since they're plastic, you can label them really easily and then you can uh, stack them as well for storage, which is great. So next up is labeling also very important stuff. So for labeling, there's two approaches that I've used in the past. And the first one uh, I'll go over really quickly is just if you're shooting, say, some random rolls that aren't for a particular project. And what I do for that, super simple, is I just use the date as well as the film type. Uh, so let's say I shot uh, three rolls of Ektar 100 and it was on June 10th. I would call the first one 061020-Ektar100-01. And then the next one, I would do the exact same, but dash zero two. Uh, and this is just a really simple way to give each roll of film uh, its own unique name. Uh, and then you can do the same on the computer to match it up with its own unique folder. Okay, so the second thing I wanna talk about uh, is if you have film that's from a specific project. And that's what all of this stuff is here um, that we're gonna work, oh my God, <laughs> that we're gonna work with today. Okay, see, this is why. This is why this is important. I'm gonna just put that there. <laughs> so this is all from a trip that I did earlier this year uh, out to the American West for the project that I'm working on. Um, so what I would do in this scenario is I would use a very similar approach. Uh, so I'd still use the data at the start, but instead of having the film type, I would put the project name in there instead. So the working title for this project is an American Mile. So I'd put AMA-01. Uh, so. Uh, First would be the date, and when I, I say the date, I always just do the date that I get the film back from the lab or if you develop at home, whenever it was developed, because it just keeps things easy. Um, so this was probably February, let's say it was February 15th, I would do 02-15-20-AMA-01. And that would just give 
uh, each role a specific name. It would have the project title in the name, uh, which would help with organization, and then each one would be dated. Um, and then you could match that up on the computer. And then even if you want on the computer, you could put the film type in the name, uh, but it might get a little bit long and crazy as well. And then the last thing I do is on the print file sheet itself, I usually write the camera that was used at the top. Uh, just, I figure it might be nice in the future, uh, years down the road if I forget what uh, camera system I use for a specific project, just to have that reference there. One more thing I just wanna mention quickly, when it comes to binders, I like to have separate binders uh, for specific projects. So this one, for example, uh, this is all of my work uh, from the American Mile project. Uh, so really nice because it keeps it all kind of in one place um, and nice and organized. This one isn't as organized as I wish uh, it was, but that's because I've been working on this for three years and my workflow has certainly changed, like I said, over that time. Uh, and then I have this binder, which is just like miscellaneous uh, starts of potential projects, camera tests, random rolls, stuff like that. Uh, and then if anything from here ever develops into something bigger, I would put it in its own binder. Uh, you could use dividers, whatever you want. Again, all depends on how much uh, work you have in a specific project. But just want to mention that. Um, Let's jump on the computer and scan some film. Okay, so got the negatives loaded. Gonna jump into scanning. Uh, completely unrelated, but pretty excited about this uh, holder. This is my CoolScan 9000 holder that I put a piece of modified a &R glass in to help keep the negatives flat. These ones are gonna be interesting though. This is the stuff that we just cut that have been uh, spooled up for months. And even with the glass, you can still see um, imperfections there in the film. But uh, for what we're doing here for this test, gonna work fine and I'm actually quite curious to see how it works anyways with film that's this curled. But uh, anyways, got this hard drive. So this is a brand new hard drive uh, that's been wiped. Uh, and I'm gonna just use this to kind of set things up from scratch. Like I said, uh, walk through the process from start to finish. So let's get into it. Okay, so we've got this brand new drive hooked up. Uh, it is empty. We're gonna treat it like it's uh, my first photography drive or something like that we're using it for the first time. So on here, I would have a folder called film scans. And that's where all of my scans would go. And then inside of this film scans folder, I would have a folder called projects. I'd also have a folder called misc, like I said, for just random roles or for images that I didn't really know where they were going yet. But for this tutorial, we are doing a project of mine. So in that projects folder, I would have a folder for the specific project, in this case, uh, my American Mile project. Uh, so folder for that, and then that's where all of the uh, rolls of film that I scan are gonna live for that specific project. And each one of them uh, is gonna have its own folder, which is gonna be titled the same name that we put on the print file sheet. So for this first roll of film that we're scanning, uh, we labeled it when we sleeved it, 021520-MA-01, I believe it was called. Uh, so that's where all the scans for that specific role are gonna live. And then when I go to do another role, uh, it's going to be called 02-15-20-MA-02. Uh, and so on and so on and so on. So basically all of the film that I scanned for this project is gonna live in this folder and each role is gonna have its own folder with all the scans for that particular role in it. And the folder is gonna be named the same thing we name our print file sheet. That way it all kind of meshes and it all jives. <laughs> and it's all good to go. And then the nice thing is, is when we import uh, those folders into Lightroom, those same names are gonna carry over into our collections uh, folder, which uh, then just kind of takes that one step further. Everything in Lightroom is gonna match everything in Finder, is gonna match everything in our print file folder. Uh, so just nice and tidy. Uh, and in Lightroom, you can make uh, a library for every project, or you can just have one. Uh, for me, I just have one library for all of my photography and then I use, uh, use the collections uh, on the left hand side uh, basically to, to uh, organize it all into specific projects and stuff like that but we can look at that later. So let's jump into it. So I am using ViewScan. This is not a ViewScan tutorial um, or a Negative Lab Pro tutorial. Those are the two programs that I use together. I am going to make one that's going to go more in depth just about that specific process. Uh, this is more just about the workflow as a whole. So if you're using Silverfast or Epson Scan or whatever, uh, a lot of this stuff's gonna still apply in terms of uh, scanning and organization and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I will go over quickly my process here if you are using ViewScan or if you're interested in it. But the other thing too, depending on the scanner you're using, not all of the settings are gonna match and all that. So 
If you are using ViewScan for the first time, uh, it'll be really basic. You gotta click Options Plus, and you gotta click it once more. And that's gonna open up all of the kind of options available for the specific scanner that you're using. So for me, I'm using a CoolScan 9000, which we have selected up here. Uh, media, I'm gonna leave set to image because basically what I wanna do is I wanna scan the negative as is. I don't want any conversion done in ViewScan and then I wanna export it just as a raw DNG file. And I'll use Negative Lab Pro to do the conversion. So usually in the past I would set this to color negative because I'd want ViewScan to uh, invert it and do the color correction and stuff. But uh, now I'm, I'm using Negative Lab Pro to do all that. So I leave this set to image and that way it scans the negative as it is. Um, bits per pixel, I'm going to go 48 because I'm not doing any infrared cleaning, so I don't want 64 RGBI. Um, frame number one, so basically uh, ViewScan will automatically sequence and number your images, which is a really nice feature. Uh, so for us, uh, we are scanning the very first image on this roll, so I'm going to leave that frame number set to one. Uh, Scan resolution, I'm gonna go 4,000 DPI. Again, you may not have all these settings based on what scanner you're using. Uh, autofocus always for the cool scan. Um, so find mode, I, I always have on when using uh, the cool scan with view scan. For some reason, um, if you don't have this checked on, you get banding even with the latest model. Um, so I always have it set. It does take a lot longer uh, and obviously we're just kind of doing like a tutorial practice here. So I'm going to leave it checked off uh, just for the sake of keeping this <laughs> somewhat speedy. Uh, and then, so these two are important down here. So default folder, this is where it's going to send your scan files when they're done. So we want to go for this roll of film, we want to set that to uh, the folder that we created that matches the name. That's where we want all of these scans for the specific roll to go. And then raw file name, what I do, this is gonna default, send it to the exact same folder, which is what we want. And then I call the individual images the exact same thing as the folder itself. Uh, and then ViewScan will sequence these. If I've done everything right, it should sequence these automatically. But the, the idea is I want it to be called, each image to be called, uh, in this case, 021520-AMA-0101. And then the next one would be 02 and 03 and 04. And it, it's not the prettiest name, uh, but it, it does give every file a unique name. There's no overlap uh, and it's just consistent. So it's what I like doing. If you have some other idea that you think would work better, then let it rip. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this set as dash. Like I said, I think ViewScan will number these automatically if I've done everything right. Uh, so I'll leave that as is. So I'm gonna go to the output tab, uh, default folder. This is still set the same. Um, auto file name, I believe we want on. That should do the sequencing for us. Uh, and then we just want raw, raw file checked. Don't want TIFF or JPEG or anything like that because we just want a raw DNG exported uh, from this. Uh, and then our name should carry over as well. And everything else looks like it should be good to go. Uh, I don't want any of these filters on. I'm not gonna do any uh, IR cleaning. I don't want any grain reduction. Nothing like that. Color I'm gonna leave alone, because again, we're just scanning the negative as is. So let's go ahead and do a preview. Okay, so we're gonna flip this quickly, do this first image. So when you're using um, this method, view scan exporting as a uh, raw DNG and then converting with negative Lab Pro, you wanna make sure that you are keeping a little bit of the border uh, in your crop here because you do need that uh, to balance. Sometimes you can white balance with that in uh, Lightroom for negative lab pros. So we're gonna do that. Um, this is a little autofocus point uh, for the cool scan, which shouldn't matter if my film is nice and flat. Um, yeah, so I think we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and scan this and we will do one more after this. Okay, so that's the first frame done. We're gonna scan one more for this test, but if we just quickly go to our finder and we go to the folder we created, we will see there's our um, first image. And for some reason, ViewScan did not title that 
01. I don't know why. So we're going to go ahead and do that ourselves. That's one thing i got to figure out, because that is a, I know that's a feature of the program where it will automatically sequence these. Um, but for some reason, I don't know why it's not showing up as an option. Anyways, uh, let's pull up the next scan. So I believe 645, I have to go. With the cool scan, you have to do the offset here uh, for it to kind of show you the rest of the next frame. And it's all kind of dependent on what the uh, format size is. So we'll wait for this one. Hopefully I got it right with 30. Looks like I did. Okay, this one's good to go. So same thing. We're just gonna adjust our crop here uh, to leave a little bit of that uh, border in. Go to cropped area. I'm just gonna look here quickly once more because I really, I will check this to number two because this is our second frame. Why did that reset it? Oh, interesting. That might, must have something to do with the frame offset. Okay, so that is not... This auto-numbering feature is somewhere... I thought it was going to do it for us, but doesn't seem like it will. Okay, anyways, for now I'm going to number them um, manually, which isn't the biggest deal, but if you do know, let me know in the comments below. But let's go ahead and scan this one. Okay, so that one's done. So we're going to go back to our finder. So here's the next one. So yeah, Unfortunately for this video, I'm just gonna have to go and number these uh, manually. Not really a huge deal. You get the, the point. Uh, there is a way to do it in ViewScan though, which would be really handy. But I'm not gonna scan anymore. I'll just, I'm gonna leave it at those two. Um, but you, you get the point. So for this role, it's 16 frames. You would end up with uh, 16 of these from one to 16, all with their own individual name. Uh, nice and tidy. Okay, so we're going to import these into Lightroom now. So we're going to go import. Um, we have our folder right there. We can also just drag and drop these. Uh, so when I import into Lightroom, I always add to collection. So I've already gone ahead and made this folder, but what you would do is you would uh, give this a name, uh, the collection that you're creating. So I do a collection uh, for every single role that I import and then I put those inside of a collection set. Uh, so this collection set will be called, uh, when we create one, it will be called uh, an American Mile. So I would have a collection set which is called American Mile. And then inside of that collection set, I would have a collection for every single roll of film. And then, like I said, it all kind of jives, all matches. Uh, so I've already created uh, this collection. So that's what we're gonna import them to. So we'll do import. Hey guys, so quick interruption, Kyle from the future here uh, realized when I was editing this that the camera actually cut out just for a short period of time when I was talking about this organization. Really just wanted to make sure that uh, this was explained properly. So uh, when it comes to the collections, like I said, we added this one and created a new one titled the same name as the uh, folder for the role that we're doing. Uh, but then how I lay it out here, so we have our main uh, collection set that I talked about which we titled um, An American Mile. And then under that, we had, uh, an, I made another collection set called Scans. So you can basically, you can create kind of like a master collection set and then you can put collection sets inside of that and then collections inside of those. So you can really kind of start to organize things. And like I was saying before with Lightroom, that's why I have one uh, library for all my photography and then I organize from there. So I've gone ahead and made these already, but as you can see, uh, we have our main collection set for this project called Amer In American Mile. Um, and then in that, I've made a collection set for scans. So all of the film scans that I do, that's where they're all going to live. And then a collection for each role. So this is the, the one that we're working on here. And then from there, uh, in kind of that master collection set for the project, you can make other sets for all sorts of other things. So for instance, I made one called Website Selects, which is where I would put um, images that say we're going on a portfolio uh, on my website. You can make another one for prints, um, just whatever you want. So it's a way to kind of have this master set for a project and then have your scans in there and then have kind of all sorts of other things as well. Uh, anyways, back to the video uh, and we will convert these images. Okay, so like I said, I'm using Negative Lab Pro. Uh, and the first place you always want to start is you want to assign the proper profile to this raw 
DNG. Uh, in this case, the profile is embedded. Sometimes Adobe will assign a profile, but you wanna go here to this profile manager. And you wanna select the latest Negative Lab Pro V2.1 and then close. And then the second thing you wanna do is you wanna white balance uh, this image. Uh, they suggest using the picker tool and part of the border, but that almost always happens nine times out of 10. It says that you need to pick a darker neutral area. So in that scenario, they suggest just using the auto feature and it always seems to work fine for me. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna crop the image. It's a good opportunity to do that because I wanna get rid of the border and then uh, also set this to the proper aspect ratio. So four by three in this scenario because this was shot six, four, five. Okay, we're good to go. So to pull up Negative Lab Pro, you wanna go up here, plug in extras and select it. You can also hit Control N. Um, and I just always leave these settings to default. The only thing I change uh, for color model is I always choose Frontier, just because that's the scanner that I always prefer uh, when I get my film scanned at a lab. So that's when I do pre-saturation. I've always been happy as well. Leaving that at default, you can play around with those and just see what you like. Uh, so yeah, let's hit convert negatives. Okay, looks good. So as well, almost every single time, uh, the conversion is too contrasty for me, so I almost always do all soft, and that usually fixes things right away. This is still a little contrasty for my liking, so maybe we're gonna try soft lows here. Didn't really do anything. Let's see if we can just bring those blacks and those darks up. I, I'm not gonna do too much here, just because uh, I will edit this afterwards in Lightroom. But again, this is not an editing tutorial, so I'm not gonna get too in depth with that. And you can also play around down here with uh, color. I'm almost always using neutral or warming. I'm gonna go to warming in this case. And you can play with the hue a little bit uh, and stuff like that. But I always try and do a lot of my conversions afterwards in Lightroom. Uh, that is what I like to do. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna leave this as is. Any edits I would do later on, like I said. Uh, sharpening, I have been using uh, Scanner. It, all this is doing is doing a preset sharpening in Lightroom, so you can always go and change it afterwards if you aren't too happy with it. Um, so the these settings are kind of irrelevant because like I said, this isn't uh, an NLP video, but the one thing I did want to touch on because it matters for us in this scenario, if you are using this workflow uh, and you're using Negative Lab Pro, uh, I always click make a copy uh, and TIFF, and then I just do stack with photo. And that's because uh, if you don't do that, uh, well, we'll do it, it's gonna give us two, and I can show you what the original file, what happens with that if you don't do that. So let's click apply. Um, so this, my cables are blocking this. Oh, it's still converting our, making our second file. Wait till that's done. You can really see that banding up in the sky without using that fine mode. Okay, so if I go to all photographs, we should have two here now. So the second one is the TIFF uh, file of ours. Um, so you'll see if you're on the original Negative Lab Pro, since this has just been inverted, uh, if you try and actually change anything, things get really crazy. Um, settings don't work how they should. All sort, you get all sorts of weird color shifts and stuff like that um, because you're still working off of this DNG file that has the kind of conversion done. So I always make a TIFF because then you have this uh, kind of baked in converted file and Lightroom is gonna act how it should when you uh, make any of your adjustments. The only thing now is you end up with two files. So you'll see here, positive.tiff. So that is the converted uh, file of ours. So what I do is I'll scan all my DNGs, I'll import them all, and then I'll, I'll go through with Negative Lab Pro and I will convert them all, making those duplicates, and I'll just go through at the end and I will uh, select the DNGs and delete them. Just because um, for me, there's no use saving them. And it, since I have everything organized, it's easy enough for me to go back um, and rescan if I ever needed to. It's easy to find uh, the original negative. Okay, so I'm gonna just kind of speed this up. I'll convert this really quick. Okay, 
So you'll see here now I have my two DNG files and then I have my two TIFF files. Uh, and like I said, I would go and I would take these original DNGs, uh, let's see if I can select them, and I would delete both of those from disk. I just want these TIFFs, that's all I want. Same with this one, delete from disk. Cool, so this leaves me now with these two converted TIFF files, and if I go back to the folder here, there they are. And they've had uh, the names changed, so they now include the word positive. Um, I would probably go later and just do like a batch to remove that and rename them. Again, not really a huge deal. So anyways, we only scanned two images, but this basically gives you uh, an idea of naming all the way from the start using the print file sheets, uh, carrying that name over into Finder for the folders, uh, importing those folders and those names into Lightroom, having it nice and tidy over here in the collections folder, uh, converting it using the ViewScan Negative Lab Pro process, and then getting rid of those DNGs and just having these uh, files to work with. And in the end, again, these are just super rough. I'm gonna delete these. <laughs> um, there's crazy banding in them and the color's a little, a little off. But if this, if I were going through my normal process, uh, right now I would basically have these two converted, very high-end uh, files, these TIFF files uh, at a really high resolution um, that are basically living inside Lightroom, uh, ready for any edits I wanna make or to be duplicated for prints or, or whatever I need be. So anyways, Definitely not the quickest process. Um, if I were, say, a 35 mil shooter, uh, it would be really tough <laughs> to scan 35 mil at home doing it this way. But for me, shooting a lot of medium format, and I don't shoot often shoot a ton of volume unless I'm going on big trips, uh, this is a way to just have control over the process from start to finish and really just kind of get the most quality um, out of all of my film negatives and have everything organized just uh, in a really kind of cohesive uh, and tidy way. So anyways, I hope this little kind of look into my workflow from start to finish helped. I know this was a longer video and there were kind of a bunch of different steps to it. I hope it all kind of comes together and makes sense. And I hope uh, that even if maybe this entire workflow doesn't fit you, um, maybe there's a few little uh, ways of working in there that you can adapt to your process and it'll make things a bit easier moving forward. Anyways. Thank you guys, appreciate you watching, appreciate all the support, and uh, we'll see you soon.